to see. Um, I mean, this is where you start to see right most of these. So we have HiQ um, from from uh, ITI, right? Uh, it's a research institute in Italy, um, and we have Starlet from Italy, and we have the very first version of Cheetah One from MIT, right? and we have the very early iteration of Spot uh, from Boston Dynamics, right? So fast forward in 2020, right? Then then we start to see a more industrial version of this, right? And then we start to get to see these robots in the wild, right? And as a matter of fact, in uh, 2020, you will see a Spot. Right, we did in Vision Park doing uh, uh, what's that? Uh, make sure that you actually do uh, safety distancing, right? And then we have Animal City, uh, which is a spin off uh, from a uh, research lab in Italy, and we, we have a uh, Vision 60 and Light Arbor, which is from, from, from China, right? And then, it, and, and you also see not just from research labs or industry, but you also see, see uh, a booming or emerging. Um, trend right in, in the open source community, right? Not just in software, but also in the hardware domain, right? I think one reason is that there's a huge uh, boom in, in in where we, uh, hobbies or enthusiasts are uh, having some access, right, into hardware like the three printers and you know um, disk printers that are able to, that allows us to build such capabilities. So the journey started in 2015. So I should say this is really what inspired me to build the robot. So this is one of the robots that, that I spotted um, back in 2015. And really curious on how complicated is it to build such a robot? Right. Okay. So back in 2018, I started to take some of the papers and do some, some, some research, right? And 2019, uh, I started to build a prototype. So first you see the body pose of the robot, um, and, and you see the robot walking, and as well, the last, last one is to, to test the dynamics of the robot, how it's able to run, right? and how much can we do in open source hardware. And, and, and a year later, uh, it proved the robot into much heavier, um, here to, to bring some autonomy of the robot. Um, as what Yadu has presented earlier, there's a, you know, you can actually do, create a map on the robot, so, uh, well, this presentation is using rails. This time it's, it's the same, but uh, it's using legs, right? So if you see that black thing on top of the robot, it's actually the sensor, the LiDAR sensor that, that allows the robot to generate a map and eventually make it autonomous, right? So when I was building it, right, there's a realization that, that happened, okay? So if, if you look at the browser system, you see that we have we have a simulation stack for most of the robots out there, right? We even have a human-like robot from NASA. Um, we have for UAVs, we have ground robots, we have for underwater, and we have manipulators. But we don't really have a simulator simulation stack for quadruped robots, right? So I had the idea to what if I could pivot all these algorithms and make it a framework so that the community can use it, right? So the idea is to have a development infrastructure for arbitrary robots and a simulation environment to allow um, developing new algorithms and accelerate this technology further, right? And of course, to be able to uh, build low-cost platforms in the future. <coughs> so here's a problem, right? Imagine you have a fancy car, you have a nice chassis, right? Someone gives you a nice chassis, but you realize there's no engine on it, right? So that's pretty bad, right? So I think it's the same what's happening in the community now. So there's a lot of open source URDF files right, published by companies, um, Boston Dynamics, uh, I don't know. The problem is it doesn't really come with an, with an engine to make the robot work, right? But I mean, fair enough, because it's a proprietary system and there's a lot of IP included in it, right? So these visualization tools are mainly to, you know, for you to visualize the robot, but it doesn't come um, with the capability to make the robot work, right? You can use it. So the idea is to, Use Champ as the main engine, right? And provide you the algorithms, simulation stack, and as well as software tools, right? And then from there, you can build your know, applications. So, why is this package for? Um, you can use it as an educational resource if, you, if you're starting to learn robotics. There's a lot of algorithms uh, that it covers, mainly from local, uh, locomotion, state estimation, and if you learn ROS and Gazebo on it. So if, if you're coming from, if you want to use um, 
this tool to write your high level applications. Let's say you have a, a robot that you just want to, you know, uh, make the robot to patrol or, you know, get some high level stuff, uh, you can do so. So it comes with a few software tools that you can use off the shelf, right? So you can navigate and it comes with common filters and it also comes with very, very popular robots, right? We have Spot from Boston Dynamics, uh, Anybotics, and h And it's also for research, right? It comes with all these tools that you can leverage on and focus mainly on the research that you're, you're working on, right? So you fall on this tree and maybe this package is for you, right? So I won't go into the details, but some of the features um, on chat. So it comes with a setup assistant, right, to generate the package for robots. Can I have a show of hands? Uh, any movement users? How, how many users move it here? All right. Okay. So setup assistant is pretty similar to mobile assistant, where it helps you to set up, right? Uh, let's say you have a new robot, you just build or design a new hardware, and you want to create an engine to make the robot work, right? So Jack also comes with a, so if so you don't need to configure these robots, so you can easily use uh, these robots off the shelf. Okay, it comes with a locomotion controller, right? If, if you if you want to do high level uh, applications, so the idea is not for Chen to be uh, to replace Boston Dynamics engine or, or be the state of the art, but to provide you an infrastructure and it comes with a locomotion controller for users to easily uh, use the whole stack. Okay, so how's the workflow like? So if you're simulating it, so maybe you start off with a UI here, right? and then you, you generate the config package using the movie, I mean the, the chat setup assistant. And then from there you use Gazebo to find you in the PID constants, right, on your actuators. And then from there you can start your simulation work. Right. And then if you're building a new robot, you can use whatever you've learned in the simulation and you can start your development. So these are some of the things that are generated uh, on the setup assistant. Okay, so it helps you configure your your simulation work, and as well as you can you can do mapping, you can do navigation, um, and in, on, as well as the pre-configured uh, files to do all these capabilities, um, and all the semantics of the robot. Right. Okay. So I won't go into details into this. So this is the server system. So you can either do um, tell the system the namespace of each leg, right? So what this means is that the left front leg is using an LF namespace, and then one up. Okay, fair. Um, okay, so yeah. So you you can either tell the namespace of the robot, or you can manually tell which leg. Uh, which part belongs to each parts of the leg, right? So, for instance, this is the left front leg, and hip upper legs, and then you just tell which legs actually belongs to those parts of the legs, right? And then with that, you you could actually generate the the configuration from there. Okay, so here are some of the examples um, of the robots that have been pre-configured in uh, Gazebo. So we have um, some of the popular ones. We have a spot. Uh, from Boston Dynamics, we have Animal C, and we have uh, MIT Miniature here. All right. Um, so here's Animal C uh, in Gazebo after being configured in the setup assistant. And it says hi. All right. So here's the high level architecture. So the controller accepts the, uh, two types of inputs. Um, you can control it using your velocity inputs, maybe the twist messages, or you can control the full body force of the robot, right? So the idea is to have a hierarchical approach um, in the control system. Many the, the controller, uh, the hardware interface and the state estimation is pretty uh, decoupled from each other. Uh, it allows users to actually use um, their own components uh, if needed, right? So for instance, you want to have your own controller or you want you want to generate an MTC based controller, and you can do so. Or uh, if you say you're working on a reinforcement learning uh, based controller, you can do so as well. So you can use the infrastructure and train your own agent 
to, to do and, and deploy it on, on Jamf to actually make it work. Right. So the hardware interface, um, changing from the physical robot to the gazebo ro um, to the virtual robot is a matter of uh, changing the launch files. So it comes with hardware interface and also um, gazebo plugins to actually generate uh, to, to actuate the, ro the robots. <coughs> So it also comes with a state estimation where it allows you to calculate the high level velocity, uh, the current pose of the robot, and it does depth reckoning as well. So to, to know where is the position of the robot from the origin. Okay. So there is, uh, with these capabilities, um, you can leverage on existing ROS packages, right, and take the robot as a, as a usual, like a normal base. So the idea is that um, these capabilities are transparent to the user, and so you can take it like as a normal mobile base, right, or like a turtle one, and then you can use mobile base and local localization to, to tap onto these capabilities. Okay. So for the control inputs, um, so so for uh, velocity inputs, it has three degrees of freedom. You can control in the linear x, y, uh, and as well as the angular um, axis. And for the body pose, it's a four degrees of freedom. You can change the height of the robot. You can change the roll, the pose, uh, the, the yaw, and the, yeah. Roll pitch and yaw. Okay. Yeah, so so here's, here's an overview of the paper. Um, this is based on MIT Cheetah 1. Um, so the idea is that this is an hierarchical controller. Um, so the body controller, which accepts the body post uh, input uh, from the user. So this, if you, in a nutshell, basically this allows the robot to do the translations of the N effectors, mainly the legs, uh, which is used as a reference point um, for the trajectories, right? So next we have the base generator, um, mainly the, the sides as to which time each leg has to be uh, on the ground or as, as to when it should be swinging uh, up in the air. Right. And the leg transformer basically calculates the uh, trajectory of the foot, the rotation, and the length, how, how far is it. So if you look at it from the bird's eye view, I uh, decided this one. Right. Next is the foot planner. And next is the IT engine. So the IT engine supports different types of form factors. So uh, you have a conventional one, and then you have an X type, right, and a few more form factors. Okay. So for development, um, you, there's, there's also a visualization tool that helps you debug, um, you know, the end effectors. So this is one of the uh, one of the example applications done on, on Boston Dynamics spot, where it, it does a chicken hit. So it does hit some of the singularity here. That's why it's, it's, there's a lot of artifacts uh, on the robot itself. But the idea is actually show the ability of the framework to you know help you debug and with this all visualization visualization tools. Okay, so how, how are you able to integrate this in, on, on a real hardware? Um, so it's pretty much uh, similar to how you would do it in the ROS control uh, interface when, when, you know, when you work on actuators on a, on a ground robot. So the idea is that um, you have your hardware here and then the framework itself has um, templates as to how to publish all these data. So all you have to do is to actually write um, that onto the encoder or the hardware APIs and translate this into the template, templated um, publishers as, as well as the subscribers, right, or the actuators. Okay. So uh, this topic actually publishes the, the target, target trajectory of each angles, I mean of each actuators. So the idea is to, to get these angles and uh, use the actuator API so that you can eventually move the robot. So it's the same for the hardware. So using the same uh, topic name, um, it, it uses Gazebo ROS control to um, actuate the transmissions in, in the virtual world. And as well as it generates the joint states as well for you to, if you want to use any for um, feedback or state estimation. So for the state estimation node, um, so for those who are not familiar, state estimation is basically the way you, you want to uh, get some sense of the position of the robot or, or basically create more situational awareness of the robot based on the intrinsics 
uh, or the data that's being produced. Um, so given the food context, uh, food context is basically whether uh, a certain food is on the ground or not, um, and the joint states, it's able to uh, calculate the current pose of the robot, right? And as well as the speed of the robot, okay? And then um, it chooses all these data using a common filter with the IMU to have a more robust um, data in, in the uh, autometry, uh, nav message autometry message type. And it also generates this, and also it, it sends this to the TF to um, for, for more uses. <laughs> so if you take a, so these are the topics that's being published and subscribed. So if you take a look at the blue um, highlighted topic names, um, this is the common culprits when you are working on a on a, on a on a autonomous robot, right? So if you have a turtle bot, um, pretty, this is pretty much what you will see, will, will be seeing um, before you make the robot autonomous. So having said so, uh, the stack has the capability to make it autonomous. So this is um, one of the demo using MIT Cheetah doing an autonomous navigation. So um, the same thing, it, it requires you to, to create a map and, and uh, they use the map to uh, get the robot localized itself for navigation. All right, here's another open source hardware using a chat. Um, yeah. So given a map, you can actually send the code to the robot. Yeah, just navigate. Okay, so here's here's the open source project based on chat. So this is a research work from NUS. So the idea is to get a much better robot to pick up from a conveyor belt and uh, move it into the second floor and be able to climb stairs. So here it's starting to pick up the object from the conveyor belt, fix it up, and move around. Right. So how this works is um, it uses a gems foot banner and then uh, uses another open source package called GreenMap um, to actually uh, calculate the costs based on um, the depth data being generated from the sensor. So this is a cost-based uh, heuristic as to find um, the most the most probable where uh, the, the most safe the safest place where the foot can be uh, located on a certain time. And then from there, it sends it to the IT engine to eventually make the robot move. Right. So in summary, um, Jeff, there's a setup system that you can use um, and comes with a ready to use controller uh, to, to, to be used for your experiments. Uh, it's the, it's the, the idea is to um, not the main, best main controller, but to actually create an infrastructure for you to generate your own controllers. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of software tools that you can use and ROS compatible. Right now it's in ROS 1, but uh, ROS 2 is in progress. So the contributors will be really, really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, it's fully autonomous. And that's all for me. Thank you. So if you want to reach out and uh, yeah, you want to be contributors, uh, yeah, just ping me in any of these uh, yeah, streams. Thanks.